Hi, welcome to Berlin and a new edition of DWTV's German movie magazine Kino. I'm Monica Jones and here's what's coming up on today's show. Quiet and intense, remembering actor Ulrich Mühe. Pop and propaganda, the US star of the GDR. Home and away, growing up in a Bavarian backwater. Ulrich Mühe was a quiet man with a powerful presence both on stage and in front of the camera. His international breakthrough came playing an agent of the Stasi, East Germany's secret police, in the Oscar-winning film The Lives of Others. But it was too late for a Hollywood career. Ulrich Mühe died of cancer July 22nd at the age of 54. Kino says goodbye to one of Germany's truly great actors. In February, Ulrich Mühe was celebrated in Hollywood as the star of The Lives of Others, which won this year's Oscar for Best Foreign Language Film. Mühe delivered a brilliant performance as a dar and ruthless agent of the East German secret police. But he eventually comes to feel concern for the couple he's spying on and helps them. Is you really by the Stasi? Do you know what that is? The Stasi? Yeah, they are the men who are the other ones, my papa. So. Mür himself grew up in communist East Germany. In the late 1980s, he helped organize demonstrations against the regime. Every citizen of East Germany has the right under the Constitution to express their opinions freely and publicly. Only later did I really understand how unfree I had been and how grey I had become. The GDR was the only point of reference. We were obsessed with it. We'd play Shakespeare and focus only on what he had to say about East Germany. Ulrich Müller started acting in Leipzig. In 1983, he joined the ensemble of the prestigious Deutsches Theater in what was then East Berlin. He played many major roles there, including Oswald in Ibsen's Ghosts. He starred in Bernhard Vicky's film Spider's Web, playing an unscrupulous man keen for success in the chaotic years after World War I. After German unification in 1990, Mühe worked at the Burgtheater in Vienna and at the Schaubühne in Berlin. Sein! Oder nicht sein! Das ist die Frage! One of his most celebrated roles was Hamlet in Heiner Müller's Hamlet, Hamlet Machine. In every role, Mühe performed with a single-minded intensity. When I do theater, I always approach things as if I can change the world with my performance. That's how I learn theater, and that's how I'll always do it. In the early 90s, he played in Helmut Dietl's Oscar-nominated satire about a journalist who finds Hitler's diaries, which turn out to be fake. A true story, by the way. Mühl was equally compelling playing cold-hearted brutes and sensitive tights. He could also be very funny, for example, as Hitler's acting coach in Danny Levy's Mein Führer. Uniform 
wachsen sie aus ihrem Inneren. In real life, away from stage and film set, Mir could appear shy and retiring. He was not a showman, all the more intense when in character. He was surprised by his own popularity. I have such great memories. I had such great encounters with people who came up to me and said how important my acting is for them. I find that hard to understand. Ulrich Möhr won many awards in recognition of his work. He died just a few months after film lovers around the world first had the opportunity to see the lives of others and came to cherish him. Möhr was a great actor who died at the peak of his success. Ulrich Möhr is one of the reasons German films have become so popular abroad. International hits like The Lives of Others, as well as Goodbye Lenin and Perfume, the story of a murderer, have whet the appetite of international distributors for new German movies. Cinema promotion body German Films gives buyers a sneak peek at the latest productions at its annual summer previews. A film premiere in Cologne, attended by more than 50 distributors from 18 countries. They viewed film and TV productions that are, so far, unknown even to German audiences. One of those is Fata Morgana. Wollt ihr in die Wüste? Ja. A trip to the desert becomes a traumatic odyssey of horror for a young couple. A stranger drives them ever deeper into the desert instead of leading them out. The film won over distributors thanks to its strong images and unusual story. Successful directorial work like this is no exception in German cinema. The main factor, which is always completely uncontrollable, is that there is a generation of directors that happen to make films with, with very broad appeal. And in their slipstream they take, they take better opportunities for other directors as well. Whether audiences are as enthusiastic about Fata Morgana as the professionals will become clear in two weeks when the film is released in Germany. The current state of German cinema was of course a hot topic of conversation at the formal opening of the previews. The mood was noticeably positive and a few people made an effort to explain why German directors are so successful these days. There's a new generation that has watched a lot of films and television and has very good technical training and is simply willing to tell stories that have the potential to interest audiences. The more German, the better, I'd say. The genuine German stories are more successful than what we used to call commercial Euro puddings. What's truly German is what's especially interesting for me, at any rate. Another of the stories that caught the distributor's attention was Eight Miles High. The film has the basic ingredients for success. It's about sex and student riots in the 1960s. However, it was a flop in Germany. One of the global distributors at the German film's previews was Cologne-based The Match Factory. It managed to sell the rights to Fatih Akin's new film The Edge of Heaven, which was honored in Cannes, when it was still in the screenplay phase. That's in spite of an increasingly competitive market. Distributors who four years ago bought 30 films a year now buy only 15. 
So it's become more difficult in that sense. At the same time, the success of German films does make it easier. That sounds like a paradox. But in fact, German films now have a larger market share, a greater acceptance. But at the end of the day, selling films has got harder. At the previews, the match factory showed Früher oder Später, in which 14-year-old Nora falls in love with her adult neighbor. Nora, tell me, what is your biggest match? Ich weiß nicht. Ich ich wäre gern hübscher. One of the highlights in Cologne was the film The Calling Game. A young woman escapes the drudgery of her life by calling up strangers and disguising her voice. In the guise of a little girl, she tries to awaken their compassion. Du Gabi, eh? Ah, hallo Magdalena. Du gehst nicht weg. Du gehst nicht weg. Weil wenn das Geschwinst mich doch packt. A family drama is behind what seems like a harmless prank. Meins ist merke ich nicht, wenn du dir einen schickerst. Hast du wieder von der Zoo Eiske mitbringen lassen, den Scheiß. The three-day preview session closed with another party and the hopes of more international success stories. From the lonely German suburbs to Hollywood's walk of fame, we've got it all on this month's Shortcuts. Everybody comes to Hollywood. He's one of the few Germans who's made it in Hollywood. Eric Braden, who's now been honored with a star on the legendary Walk of Fame. Braden has acted in more than 120 film and TV productions. His U.S. career began in the 1960s, and he's been a member of the cast of the soap opera The Young and the Restless since 1980. In 1997, he won a daytime Emmy for that role, and then came Titanic. Are you of the Boston Dawsons? The role as the American millionaire John Jacob Astor was the toughest and most exciting one of Braden's career. But at a very fit 66 years old, Eric Braden shows no signs of retiring anytime soon. Edgar Zelgo delivers a great performance in the new comedy Fashion Victims. He plays a textiles agent for women's wear. He's getting old, but he has to keep on fighting. His competitor is young and ruthless. Na Wolfgang? Du kannst dich doch nicht einfach vor meine Termine mit meinen Kunden setzen. Nein? Warum nicht? Das gibt's doch gar nicht. Wenn du da nichts mehr verkaufst. Passt wie angegossen. Wissen Sie was? Ich schenk's Ihnen. Wolfgang's marriage is not much fun either. Wolfgang, lange nicht gesehen. Guck mal. Ich hab Fliesen gekauft. Ich auch. In so kleinen Zimmern wirken helle Fliesen eh viel besser. Und wie findest du die? Wir legen die helle. Wolfgang has also lost his driver's license. His son, Karsten, has to drive him around. Sag mal, hörst du mir überhaupt zu? Nö. Grüner wird's nicht. Ja, aber soll ich lang, rechts oder links? Geradeaus. Da darf ich aber nicht rein, das ist Lieferverkehr. Ja eben, Lieferverkehr, du Schlauberger, du. <laughs> the mood is terrible, but there's more to come. Wolfgang's rival seduces his son. Eins. Ich hab mich verliebt, glaube ich, in deinen Kollegen. A very funny look at a male midlife crisis. Ja, wie gesagt, Tür ist zu. Und zweite Schlüssel hat Opa, ich meine meinen Vater. Danke! Life is sad and dull in this housing project. Until Yevgena moves in next door and the sun rises once again for Hans Müll. 199 Euro ist ein top Preis. 199. 
übernehme ich. The unemployed Hans looks for romantic adventure while his wife is out looking for work. Eine zuverlässige, belastbare Mitarbeiterin. Katharina Talbach plays a crusty Berliner with conviction. In Du bist nicht allein or You are not alone, director Bernd Bürlich tells a muted story of people on the edge. Subtle, nuanced and realistic. We tell stories about how people refashion their lives, people in their mid or late forties confronted with a new situation and how they deal with it. My darling, du bist nicht allein, komm und träume mit mir. Du bist ein guter Mensch. It's a convincing film about life's crises and ways to overcome them. Dean Reed was a good-looking all-American country singer and actor, so it's hard to believe that he willingly moved from the United States to communist East Germany at the height of the Cold War. The East German regime couldn't believe their luck and they obviously used the American as a propaganda tool. It would be an unbelievable story if it weren't all true, as director Leopold Grün tells us in his documentary The Red Elvis. He was a singing cowboy, an American friend of socialism and a star in East Germany. Dean Reed became one of the GDR's biggest stars. Director Leopold Grün is fascinated by why this American moved to East Germany in the 1970s. The director was four years old when peace activist Dean Reed became a poster boy for the Socialist Republic. The first time I saw him was with a raised fist on East German TV. He had this toothpaste ad smile. I thought it was just a crazy story. Born in Colorado, Reed went to South America in the early 1960s, where his budding left-wing sensibilities were further radicalized. He began to speak out in support of the world's oppressed. Reed raised his profile in South America through public stunts such as the symbolic cleansing of an American flag. He also became friends with Chilean leader Salvador Allende. Leopold Grün spent five years working on the documentary, fueled enough by idealism to largely finance the production himself. This unusual American still fascinates him. His political convictions were not just talk. In Chile, he championed the Unidad Popular and Allende, and he stood by that. When he went to East Germany, at first it wasn't for political reasons, but because of a woman. But for him, the GDR was the right camp, and he was on the right side in the East. Reed's Hollywood Idol looks made him especially popular with women in East Germany. It was at a concert in Leipzig that he met his first wife. I loved him as a person and as a man, in part because of his ideas about a lot of issues. I became quite left-wing through his influence. I started to think differently about the Palestinians and about terrorism. He was a great advocate of the idea that you could achieve a lot through terrorism. The film does not shy away from Reed's pro-violent stance. He met with Yasser Arafat in Lebanon in 1977. He had no problem with allowing his popularity to be exploited for others' agendas. I believe really that there are many ways to be revolutionary. Und die Gitarre mit der Maschinenpistole zu tauschen, ist nicht abwegig. The film reveals Reed's naive faith in a functioning socialism. Durch den Kampf des Volkes und durch die internationale Solidarität 
eines Tages Chile wird frei. Uruguay wird frei. Paraguay wird frei. In meinem Verständnis von Agitation. According to my understanding of Agitprop, which isn't a bad thing, we did use him. Yes. The film shows the tragedy of an idealist who was ultimately disillusioned by reality. Despite his outspoken criticism of U.S. policies, he never turned his back on his home country. I do believe in a, a type of socialism. Uh, whether it is time in the United States for a type of socialist party or maybe even a social democratic party, I don't know. Uh, I would love to go back to Colorado and uh, be senator of Colorado. Six weeks after that interview was broadcast on U.S. television, Dean Reed was found dead in a lake near his home in East Berlin. There's evidence his death was a suicide. Leopold Grün's film paints a portrait of a tragic hero, a man unable to find his proper place in the world. Last year, Markus Rosenmüller was an unknown first-time filmmaker. Today, the young director is practically a brand. His first two films, the rural comedies, Grave Decisions and Heavyweights, were local hits. Now his third film hits the cinemas. And just like the others, it's set in Rosenmüller's home state of Bavaria. A star has been born rather quickly. Markus Rosenmüller besieged by photographers at a press conference. The director's latest film, Good Times, is about growing up. For Kati and Joe, being a teenager hardly feels like the time of their lives. They live in the boondocks. It's dull. And there's always trouble with parents or boys. They want to go far, far away, and they fret about their weight. Lass mich doch nur absagen, das sage da. Ich seh nix, wo es weg muss. Schau dir das einmal an. Plump. Das sind halt Hüften, die hat man halt. Komm mal vor wie ein Brauereigaul. Kann ich mich klein unterstellen zum Grasen. Solange mein Kühlschrank leer frisst, wird nicht geraucht. The film is about freedom and what it means to have a home. Ich sehe ja deinen Kühlschrank immer leer. Bald bin ich in Amerika. In Amerika? In Amerika mache ich die Aufnahmeprüfung fürs College. Wenn das nicht einmal mehrere Sprüche sind. Es ist mein Leben. Ich gehe lang vortrainern, mein Wein zusammensaufen und stundenlang telefonieren. Das ist dein Leben. Weißt du, was ich mich frag? Warum schmeißt mir da du eigentlich nicht raus, wenn ich da so lästig bin? The film is a reflection on childhood, growing up, breaking free and saying goodbye. It's set in the Bavarian countryside, and that's clearly one of the themes, life in the country. It might sound awfully unspectacular, but eventually you realize that that gives you something to fall back on, roots that support you. When you look back, years later, you might find it really was the best time of your life. And how it is often, first later, it was the best time of your life. Wie war's noch in der Kaserne? Beschissen, wie immer. Ich hab die vermisst, Baby. Entschuldigung. The characters speak the local Bavarian dialect. Not so long ago, producers would have ruled that out, arguing that films in dialect just won't sell, nationally or internationally. But Bavarian is in now. And in this film, the quirky dialect helps disguise some awkward dialogue. Scheiße, gell? Was it? Da gewinnst du an Sommer. Da wird's Winter. Auf Fahrtwind und Freiheit. Sehnsucht und Liebe. A chick und a beer. Und den Vollmond als Wegweiser. Ja, genau. Prost. <laughs> The dialect is important for the authenticity of the film. The story takes place in a Bavarian village called Tandan, and that's how they speak there. Ah, du Kathi, wie fein Englisch gut. Wohin? Na ja, wenn du in Amerika bist, müssen wir da was reden können. Do you have me? Ja, Mama, ich hab dich. Die Thematik vom Film, 
It's global. But really, the story is universal. Dialect is just one ingredient. And I see Good times could have been less polished and more sarcastic and incisive, like Rosenmüller's other films. Still, it's an interesting mix of Bavarian humor and a sensitive observation of the vagaries of human emotions and aspirations. Say, my sir, say where you've gone. In memory of the late Ulrich Mühe, we're giving away the DVD of the Oscar-winning film The Lives of Others, starring Mühe as a Stasi officer in communist East Germany. For a chance to win, just write to us and tell us how you like the show. Here's the address. DWTV, Kino, Walterstrasse 6 in 13355 Berlin. Email kino at dwworld.de. That's all we have time for. Join us again next month for the latest in German cinema. Until then, have a great time at the movies.